So this is the first animated feature of the Adams Family. I just wondered why you felt it would work well in that medium and also how inspired you were by the original New Yorker cartoons. Oh, very much so. We were totally inspired. We specifically went out of our way to go back to the well with the Chaz Adams cartoons. And I think uh, it was just about time that there was an animated uh, feature version of it. Um, we could do so much with it. And again, as it started as a quote unquote cartoon, it's about time it was a, another feature length cartoon. <laughs> and what was the process like of bringing those sort of 2D images into sort of the 3D world and getting them to sort of walk around and, you know, because they're, they're quite sort of odd shapes as well, some of them, like Gomez uh, particularly, but I, I loved his uh, movement. And, and Morticia's, the way she kind of like glides, doesn't she? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I would hand that over to uh, our character designer, Craig Kalman, who worked closely with our production designer, Patricia Atchison, and they looked at the source material that we gave them and the direction that we gave them and pretty much just uh, while remaining true to Charles Adams's work, reinvented it uh, so that you could still see it, but it was something new and fresh. Uh, I know Patricia actually went back and took some of the backgrounds of the old Charles Adams cartoons and re-envisioned them in 3D and did these beautiful renderings for us. And so the two of them working together are the reason the film looks the way it does. And New Jersey, we're used to that, even um, people that have never been there and watching in uh, the UK are used to that being sort of the butt of jokes of a lot of movies, aren't they? Um, and it does get a bit of a laugh here, but it's got special significance, hasn't it, for the Adams Family? Could you talk a little bit about Well, of that? course, yeah, because it's Chaz, uh, Chaz Adams was from New Jersey. Um, so when we had to put a little bit of, a, of an Easter egg in there. It wasn't specifically a dig at New Jersey, so... Sorry, New Jersey, it was nothing personal. I'll blame that on Matt so, Lieberman, our writer, Lieberman. who uh, yeah. I think is also from New Jersey, so he's allowed. <laughs> yeah. If you brought that, it's fine, isn't it? Yeah. And, and could you talk a bit about the appeal of the origin story aspect of this, kind of getting to you know, give us an origin of the Adams Family, because I don't yeah. think we've seen that before. No, That's movie. kind of yeah. why we did it, is so that we could explore something that people might not know about the Adamses. If we're introducing a new generation to these to this family, they're going to get it right off the bat. But if you're a fan of the movies or the TV show or even the cartoons, the only origin you really got was in the old cartoons, and that was spotty at best. So we wanted to know, you know, how... Gomez and Morticia met and how they came upon their house and where they what their wedding was like and how they met Lurch, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, you know, it was really fun to explore that. In some of the storyboards, we also explored their first date mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So it was, it was pretty fun. And talking about bringing a new generation to it, uh, you both directed uh, Sausage Party, yes. which it, it has a different tone skewed obviously oh, yeah. slightly older, <laughs> slightly. Um, but um, th there's definitely a lot to keep adults entertained in this film and um, you know I think the grandparents, parents, yeah. young kids, how do you sort of strike that balance of you know entertaining everyone? Well I think we specifically went out of our way to do that because we've always been very strong believers that animation is not just a, a, a kid's medium uh, for want of a better phrase but a lot of the time it gets viewed that way um, but you know, animation is uh, it's a it's a fantastic vehicle for telling any sorts of stories, and you know most of the time, especially younger kids, are not coming to the movies by themselves. So you know it's only fair that the uh, that the adults that are in the audience don't have to sit there and sleep or read a newspaper or check their social media, whatever they might be doing. So uh, we wanted to put as much as possible in to cover all generations, and you know comedy appeals to everybody from a a baby all the way up to, you know, people in their 90s, so. And know. kids love risque stuff just as yeah. much as adults do. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if we get a little a little risque, then, you know, kids are, you know, just as just as giddy about that as anyone else mm -hmm. is. And what about the horror elements? You had a lot of fun with that. There's a few references to, to horror movies. Yeah. Um, and there's a couple of bits where it's a little, you know, I was a little bit scared to get out. The house is kind of a bit possessed. It's a little it? intimidating. Um, how do you sort of strike that balance as well, not, not making it kind of too scary, but... Scary well, enough. I think I think with yeah, <laughs> I mean the humor behind the humor it. behind it, you know, and with the house itself. I mean, right at the at the beginning of the movie, uh, we have a little interaction with uh, Morticia and the house, and then it just shows you know what his bark is worse than his bite. So, um, just as long as you make it funny and keep it humorous, and then that takes the edge off of it. And can you tell us a bit about the voice cast that you have? Fantastic cast that you've assembled. Um, what they bring to their roles, and just um, you know, working with them in the recording booth. 
Yeah, well, we were lucky enough to get everybody that we wanted for this for this movie. I mean, there wasn't anyone who said no, and we had to go to a second or a third. It was it was right off the bat we got everyone we wanted. And what was really challenging was also because it's an immigrant story and because they come from different parts of the world, even though we don't tell anyone specifically where from, they all came with an accent. You know, um, you know, Oscar came with one for Gomez right off the bat. Uh, we gave Charlize the uh, the enenviable task of trying to figure out that mid-Atlantic 1940s Catherine Hepburn Catherine type of Hepburn, thing, yeah. which is tough to do. Uh, and then Bette Midler actually came up with something that sounds halfway between, you know, um, like a Polish and an Eastern European, just a strange, strange mix of things that she actually just invented. So, um, you know, between that, I think this is... This is that was one of the funnest aspects of this movie is to work with the voice talent mm -hmm. and be able to play around and, and have fun with that. And how about with Snoop Dogg, who's cousin It? Um, are any of those sort of words that are quite hard to decipher? Is, are any of those kind of written in the script, or is that kind oh, of those, improvised? Those, those are actual words, but improvised. But that was that was well, no, that right was there, um, right? wasn't it? Like tongue Yeah, I've worked with Snoop before, yeah. and I just wanted to work with him again. And I was just like, <laughs> from day one, I was like, he has to be cousin It. I love yeah. him as cousin It. But we were trying to figure out how we would play around with that. So uh, I brought in a bunch of tongue twisters and had him just say these, you know, Moses, he knows his roses or toes, his monas, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then we took that, mixed up the words, and played it backwards and sped it up. We did all sorts of things to his voice. Um, we, you can still tell a little bit it's, there's some snoop in there, but if you reverse those, it's not going to make sense, but you will hear <laughs> words. Um, and what about your own voice characterization for Lurch? Could you tell us a little bit about that? He's a, a great character in the film. <laughs> that's just me. <laughs> that's just me going in and giving a bunch of different emotional grunts and groans and then pitching it way down. And I think the first thing I did was you rang. And when we pitched it down and listened to it, we were like, I think we forgot it was even me. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. when we looked back at who it was, they said, oh, it's me. So everyone yeah, likes it, it, so go yeah, ahead. If it and ain't broke, don't you fix got the job. it. Yeah. Um, and just finally, could you um, just tell me a bit about why you wanted to keep that theme music in there? I was really glad that you did. Um, it's just so iconic. I mean, everybody knows that. And we've even heard from people that don't know who the Adams family are, but they know that tune and they know the did it do do they, it's, it would have been crazy not to keep it. Yeah. So we were glad we were able to incorporate, incorporate it into the show for sure. Conrad, great, so, thanks very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate yes, I'm glad it was thank in you. there. I have had it yeah. stuck in my head for a, a week since I saw the yeah, movie. We've had it stuck in our head for two yeah, years. Two years. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!